some news you can use. We've got a lot of economic news. We've talked about uh, the last week or two, a lot of economic news that we got going on. Uh, we've got some new ones today. First of all, I'm going to start off with um, uh, the National Association of Realtors had a sustain sustainability report. Say that one five times quick. Sustainability report they just put out regarding office leases. Uh, as of the end of March, now this number has gone up, it was 19.4% of all offices were truly vacant. Now there's, there's truly vacant and there's the hidden vacantness. Um, and what that means is literally one out of five office offices in the U.S., uh, there was nobody paying the lease, not that they were behind on the lease, there was literally, it was not rented. They estimate that number is at least two times that to take into account the number of folks uh, who are working for a business where they're no longer allowed to go into the office or they don't go into the office or where there are businesses where they're not paying rent anymore. So currently, uh, by, by all accounts, it looks like four out of 10, two out of five, 40% of all offices in the U.S. are effectively not rented. That's a, that is a dramatic number. The, the normal rate hovers around 5%. That's at any point in time, about 5% is considered sustainable. When they get to about six and a half, seven percent 7%, they get panicked. We're at 40% right now. Um, once again, this stuff's all going to come out in the economy, uh, wash down the road. We're going to see what's going on. Ashley's got a couple of videos we're going to watch here, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, the effects of these things. Let's start with the, the federal court's decision, decision yesterday afternoon, actually. Uh, regarding the CDC's intervention in uh, evictions, what we call the eviction moratorium. Ban on evictions has been overturned. A federal judge ruled the CDC's national moratorium exceeds the agency's authority. The decision is certainly a victory for landlords who say they can't afford to continue housing people for free. <laughs> ruling could potentially affect millions of struggling Americans. A recent survey showed that about 18% of renters are not able to keep up with their payments. That's about 10 million Americans. A spokesperson for the Department of Justice says it plans to appeal and that it will seek a stay of the decision. That would keep the ban in effect throughout the court battle. And I should note, this doesn't affect people in the 17 states that have their own eviction moratoriums. Those stand under state rules. All right, before we go on to the next one, let me talk about that for a second. That, that video was done a little after lunchtime yesterday. Later on in the day, the federal government went back to Justice Department, went back to court and got a stay on that order. What that order was from the federal court, it would have immediately lifted all eviction moratoriums. It wouldn't have been, you know, we'll phase it out over the next week. It would have been an immediate and the federal government ran back into court and was able to get a stay, which means the overturn of the eviction ban has been put on hold for right now. Um, and, and the reason that behind it is they, they claim that if it was to go out of effect, in other words, there was no more eviction moratorium, uh, that COVID would spike. That is their whole argument. They don't have scientific bases upon which to back that up but it looks like this thing's headed to the Supreme Court maybe next week. Um, and so we'll see what's, what's gonna happen there. This, uh, they, they've, they've ruled that it was unconstitutional, of course. That's what federal courts do. They judge it versus the constitutionality of an issue. So uh, we saw that. Now, um, we're gonna look at some tax news. You guys probably haven't heard this. Uh, the recent proposal, like earlier this week, by the Biden administration and how it will affect the housing market. Welcome back, everybody. President Biden's tax plan could be a triple threat to the real estate market and to investors. Robert Frank joins us right now with that story. Hi, Robert. Good morning, Becky. Biden's tax plan would hit both residential and... He's going to talk about a 1021 exemption. He's just misstated it. It's a, it's a 1031 exchange which is for all commercial investors. We've relied on that for years. He just misstates it in this article. Go ahead. And commercial real estate because of three big tax changes. First is the elimination of so-called 1021 exchanges. Those allow property investors to roll their gains 
from one investment property or the sale of one property into another without paying any capital gains tax. Under Biden's plan, they would owe a capital gains tax, and that leads to the second, which is the capital gains tax would jump from 20% to 39.6% and would apply to the sale of real estate for those making more than a million in any one year. Now, keep in mind, sale of primary residences, you, you would probably still get that exemption of $250,000 per person or a half million dollars per couple. And then finally, there's the elimination of the step up in basis that would hit inherited property. So let's say if you inherit property, you would pay a capital gains tax on the gain, even if you don't sell it. But again, only if your gain and your income for that year is over a million dollars. The real estate industry already fighting these changes. The National Association of Realtors coming out, uh, sending a letter to Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen saying the proposals would reduce growth shrink affordable housing, and penalize many hardworking and enterprising Americans who have spent their lives saving and building equity in their properties. So guys, the industry lobbyists already out in force to fight these measures. Hey, Robert, some right, of thank them- Thank you, actually. Um, we don't need to go on, yeah, thanks. Um, let me tell you a little bit about, let me break that down a little bit because this is gonna affect everybody. This will be a total game changer for us in this business. First of all, the capital gains rate, they're gonna double it to 40%. So the profits you make on a, on a property, you're gonna get taxed at 40% because they're gonna eliminate, we're gonna talk about it next week. They're, they're trying to eliminate some of the tax breaks that you get through an IRA, through a Roth IRA and those kinds of things as well. So, you know, these folks that have gone out there um, and have made money, like, for example, uh, you know, my parents own their house free and clear and they bought it years ago and, you know, it's worth a gazillion dollars now. Well, uh, it either gets sold and they get taxed at 40 percent or it goes um, inherited to, you know, whenever the time comes and whoever is in charge of paying that will have to come up with 40 percent of the equity of that house to pay that, even if the house isn't sold. So it's going to, if this passes, and I don't think it will, and I'm gonna tell you how we can help it not pass, but I don't think it will. If it does pass, it will totally collapse that the housing market. There won't be, you know, nobody will sell for a high price anymore because they won't be able to afford to. I mean, you'd, give, you'd end up giving more money to the tax person, the tax man, as we say, than uh, ever before. These, these kinds of draconian things, um, were were rolled out they they had these in place in the early 60s in this in the united states and they rolled all this stuff out reagan took the last bits of them out in the 80s and to to return to something like this this is like dumb dumb economics this will totally ruin the, the housing market um and one of the things that they go on to say in the article we didn't listen to is there's lots of industry protests i mean everybody in the industry is aligned against this that's why I don't think they'll get it through, but it wouldn't hurt if you guys all write a note to your congressmen, your state senators, your, I mean, your federal senators, that type of thing, and let these folks know that you're against these tax increases that really pertain to housing. Even somebody who sells their house to move up will get taxed above and beyond $250,000 gains. So here in Southern California, where somebody may have owned their house 10 years, they could easily have four or $500,000 gain. They'd want to roll that into the next property, but anything above 250, if they're an individual or 500 as a couple, will be taxed at 40%, higher than the regular effective tax rate. So this is actually cray cray. I mean, this is going to discourage investment and increase consumption. It is not the way to do anything except destroy the economy. So um, everybody should get out there. And this is, I've never advocated for people to, take up a pencil or a keyboard and, and write to your senators and your legislatures, your congressmen, but now would be the time because we don't want this thing to pass. So um, anyway, I have burned through more than my 10 minutes of time on this call. I've got other stuff to share with you, but we're gonna have to wait until the next one uh, because I know we've got some people who've got some questions and I promised Justin we'd get him on to talk about his fourplex deal. <laughs>